here for being with us. And we're super that you have sent this call and that we can talk about all of this. Okay. So, yes, thank you, Dirk, for coming. Um, and you can talk with us. Dirk is a mental performance coach for professionals and amateur athletes. He truly understands the physical and mental side of athletes and work with athletes of all uh, professional life. Uh, he put facts on Dirk. He's five, uh, done five national teams, 13 Olympic Games, including uh, summer, winter, and Paralympics. Uh, these are obviously athletes that he's worked with. Many world championships, early question games. Pan Am Games, World Cups, European Championships, and countless national championships on both sides of the Atlantic. So um, he's mentoring and coaching successful businesses and their leadership teams in the following industries. So the financial industry, retail, fashion industry, hospitality, payment, real estate, construction, and marketing. So he's an entrepreneur of the year and people in public positions, such as a member of parliament. Uh, he's also co-authored a scientific paper, created the first functional training video for the PGA, was publicized at Huffington Post, and published his own book, How to Create a Legacy, in 2018, um, which we will link below. And I'm, yeah, that's a very brief recap of his many skills. So, like I said, I'm going to um, mute you all and... Uh, just so you're all aware, we're also going to record this so that the people who can't attend it will be able to watch it later. So I'm going to mute the microphones now, and then we will start off. And like I said, there's a question bar at the bottom uh, for anybody that has questions. So one second. Um, all right. I think we're good now, hopefully. Uh, and then Dirk, we want to make sure we can hear Dirk. <laughs> Uh, one second. Okay. Hold on. Hold on a second. I'm trying to get him to be unmuted. <laughs> and Dirk, hold on. Oh, there we go. Okay. Dirk, can you hear us? Now we can hear you. Perfect. Okay. So, uh, welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Now it's uh, me. Yes, it's all you. So uh, today we want to talk about champions and how they achieve their goals. So for the first question that we have, what is champion per your definition? Before I start explaining a little bit and talking about my, my experience working with a lot of champions, I uh, would like to thank you Tanya and Evie for organizing this. So last Friday, I think it was three o'clock mm -hmm. uh, Pacific time, got a phone call from Evie. Evie always, you know, phones when she's done with mowing her lawn. And, and she said, Dirk, we, we should do this. We should do the, um, our chat here on, on, on Zoom. And when should we do it? I said, oh, yeah, well, wh what do you think? Well, she said next Monday. How about that? Yeah, OK. So. Uh, Champions, champions decide relatively quickly and commit immediately to what is important next. That is one, one thing that I've learned from a lot of champions. Uh, they, they're doers. Of course, they take time to think about it, but when it's time, they do it. So that's, a, that's my first approach to this year. But if you ask me a typical a tip or what would be my my definition of of a champion these are are people uh, that commit to relevant goals that could be a health goal that could be a financial goal uh, could be a goal that affects your business they approach it with massive courage and commitment and what champions do, they, they can perform it consistently. And that's one thing that's very important. They can perform it or maintain their goals consistently on a very high level. That for me is kind of a, a, a definition that I would say um, describes a champion. A champion is also 
you know, when we look at, and we're going to talk about goals and, and why, goal, why I think goals are important to set and how to set the right goals. We're going to talk about that. But I would say champions have the ability not just to start a certain campaign or to achieve certain goals, they also bring it to the finish line. And that is, that is the main difference between some people that have some lofty ideas and want to maybe try it on their own. And then when it gets really, really tough, they give up. It's quite often and understandable uh, because the setup uh, was not, or the foundation wasn't quite what they should have looked at. They tried it and that, and, and failed halfway through because when it gets really tough, it's very, very difficult to do it on your own. Uh, the, uh, so one, one character trait of a champion is they bring it to the finish line. And that's, that's what we, hopefully we all can learn something from today here. And I really wanna, I, you know, it's always the same with, you know, you go to a seminar, a weekend seminar, and you listen to it, you're so excited about this. And then, and then you come home and then it's Monday and you get back to your old habits. And I, you know, my hope for this next hour or so is that you really take something from this, not just listening, but also committing to apply it. And I will give you a few ideas, a few principles that I wanna share with you um, that are, I would say, relatively easy to apply, relatively easy to take into your consideration every day because we have to make decisions every day. Is it an important decision? Is it not so important? You know, those kind of things will also determine your, your results. So my, my hope is, and my, my wish is that this next hour will change a lot for you. Not just a little bit, but a lot. Um, but the only thing to do it, the, the only thing, or the thing that you have to do is you have to commit to apply these principles, or only one principle. And then uh, I would say mission accomplished uh, of this seminar to really help you to, to make a move or learn something that can help you to propel you to the next level, to next higher level, that can give you more confidence, that can help you to create maybe bigger, bolder goals. And uh, we'll talk about more how to do it and why it's important to do it. Yeah. So I hope, I hope that there was that was a good start to, to uh, understand. It was a very good start from you. And I mean, you totally uh, got, uh, I think, the bright picture of, the broad picture of a champion and how they, they how a champion is, uh, the way they, they work with the goals and the way they set goals and how they, they target it. And basically, like you say, they go to the finish line. They're not nothing tracks them off that line. Even it goes side track slightly, it comes back on, you know. It keeps you, you know, the focus of that set goal and the end of that finish line, you can't let go, even there's side tracking in times, you know. Sometimes it's not always as easy as, you know, um, to get to the, the success you want to go for. Yeah. Well, talking, talking about being sidetracked i think i think we're we're in times right now and especially with uh, social media and and everything around us you know it's so so easy to get sidetracked and um when when this all started uh, end of or mid of march this year and the clients that i had at this time they said you know what what we don't know what we're faced with, but how can we handle it? And, uh, and I didn't know what we were faced with in March, of course not. Um, but I said, you know, it, 
we, we have two choices here. We can, we can give up and say we're, we're moving backwards here or we're stopping, we're, we're, we don't do anything right now, or we can observe and we can develop on what, what is in front of us. And, and maybe that's a, if you want, I can share that with you. I think it's very important. And, and reflecting back on the last three months from March until now, that's our, already four months, and, and looking really tr at the true facts and measurable results of the clients that I've coached and how we approached it, um, I must say it, it was the right approach. Um, and if you want, I can, I can share that with you, what my kind of idea was when, we, when the whole thing started and not knowing what we're faced with. So I will share my screen with you, if that's okay, and I'm coming back later. And we'll keep, I'll keep explaining that to you, but I, I'm a visual guy, I wanna show that. <laughs> Tanya, does it work? Hold on a second, I'm trying to see if it's working. I Not hope. yet, hold on. Try it now. It is working. Okay, there we go. Okay, so yeah. let me explain. So, <clears throat> let's do this. Let's say this was, this was March 2020. And let's call, oops. Let's call this two years. So let's call this 20, 22. And that was 20, 2020. And whoops, uh, <laughs> sorry about that. Uh, so this is not outdated, I can tell you that. That's, this is still very, very applicable here. But what I, what I was trying at the time to discuss with my clients was, you know, we have three ways to approach always a certain situation that was completely unknown. We weren't prepared for it. This is the new situation here. What can we do? So, and maybe there are more than three, but for now, uh, please look at the three scenarios that I was trying to explain to my clients. I said, you know, there's, there's the one person that is completely afraid, anxious, uncertain of the future. And we were all uncertain of the future. We're still uncertain of the future. And that, that one, that first person here that I want to portray is basically going back into their cave under the rock and don't do anything. So it, that would look like this here, not doing anything. Okay. Then we have the next person. that's saying, you know what, Dirk, I don't, I don't want him, I, I, I want to stay away from in, doing any risk, making any major decisions. I want to maintain where I am. I want to keep a look on my financials, my liquidity. I've coached a lot of business clients during this phase, still coaching. Um, and I said, absolutely. So I want to maintain what I have, hopefully. I want to keep my liquidity. I want to keep my staff. I don't want to do anything outrageous. Okay. That would look like this here. Yeah. Up and down a little bit, but moving forward, into this, oops, direction here, into the next two years. Okay, and then I have this, let's put a green in here. The person, for example, business clients, you're all, you're all running a business, basically. Um, and I said, okay, so the mark, as far as I can see, the market is shifting definitely into an area where the online business is probably gonna help you to survive. 
And I remember I had some clients that said, you know, I'm not, re <laughs> I have a product, I have a service and I have a website, <laughs> but I don't, you know, I, I don't really market it on, a, on, on my website. I'm, I'm, you know, you know. And I said, okay, but if this is where you can see the, the whole business is going, are you okay moving into this direction? And they said, some said, ah, no, I'm uncertain. And some said, yeah, I, I really want to do that. I, I think I have to do it. So they, that's just one example. Other example, for example, for, uh, you know, the people that were competing at the time and then everything stopped, you know, um, uh, Wellington stopped, uh, Europe stopped with their circuit, um, and North America stuff. So I had clients on the West Coast and Thermal and, and Wellington everywhere. And, and they said, okay, what should we do here? And I said, you, you, have, to, you have to keep moving forward. Exactly. Oh, okay, what does that mean moving forward? Well, you have to maintain your momentum. You have to maintain your routines, your training routines, your competition routines. Or oh, Dirk, there are no competitions. I said, yeah, well then, create a way and mimic those kind of scenarios because if you leave if you lose if you lose your competitive edge because competition and training is different completely yeah. different then that will have an impact so let's use number number three here like doing this moving forward exploring the opportunities. So seeing the opportunity, exploring new opportunities and moving up, slightly up, not exponential, slightly up. So then I said, I have no idea when this is gonna be back to normal, back to the 20, call it 2019 normal. We might never see that, but okay. And I said, okay, and maybe it takes one year. And let's assume 2021, which is one year from 2022, is exactly here. And then I said, and now look where they are. Person number one or business number one is probably gone. Business number two has maintained or performance has maintained on the level they were, hopefully. And business number three has has an advantage yeah i mean we can only really talk like for example to your diagram here um you know it's like like you said in the beginning everyone's a bit uncertain but you know for us we looked at it sort of the same way you said and having i think having the chance to work with you about uh just generally has given us this perspective a little bit but to look at okay this is the situation we're now in what can we say with certainty? What can we say with uncertainty? And, you know, for us, we said, okay, when we came back from Florida, the horses got a little break, which they deserved. And then we made a plan for them moving forward. So, okay, our training season has been, or our showing season has been somewhat changed, <laughs> um, but it gave us a lot of opportunities to um, further advance with our young horses, get for more training with our Grand Prix horses or your Grand Prix horses. And, um, also for our clients, you know, a few of them, uh, were as I am in our last year of U25 and we kind of, at first it was very hard to kind of, I was fortunate I could do a bit in Florida, but some of our clients stayed home and we're really counting on that summer season. So we looked at it as an opportunity to say, okay, we're going to move forward and progress up to Grand Prix because there's no more U25 for us. And, um, also with now doing these test clinics, which we have the opportunity to do with some very um, high-end high judges. judges. And they also really, I think, enjoyed being able to do this. And it's given, I think, everyone sort of another point of view and a point uh, of motivation. And I think that's the first thing. You need to find your motivation and um, build from there, you know? So, uh, and, and redirect our goals basically <laughs> yeah like we say i mean how do uh, champions achieve their goals i think uh, what you uh, you know teached us over the years is that uh, 
you need to adapt and and stay uh, change uh, with the situations and not get too stuck and, and then get stuck on the bottom that you go forward up and see the opportunity of a situation no matter what even it doesn't look good that you still uh, plan ahead and set new goals and new directions which is achievable like you were saying mm -hmm. um, and I think uh, that is what you said how do champions achieve their goals so uh, I think uh, maybe you can answer a little bit more also on that uh, how do champions achieve their goals right now and I think it answers it quite well with the statistic you showed us here that uh, with you know, that you can't let go even it's idling right now, the life or idling the shows or idling the situation. Well, I think it's, there's more than just showing. There's more than just, mm -hmm. uh, you know, if you're building a business, there's more than just one thing to each business or horse or career or, so I think sometimes this has given us an opportunity to kind of reflect. And I think that's the way it, you, you view it as well, that we should look at it kind of in a way of, of an opportunity and not just a, a negative situation. Uh, take the negative with the positive, so. Yeah. So, uh, Tanya, keep um, us on track. Yes, <laughs> so I'm going to move us a little bit further along in our questions, if that's okay, dear, uh, because I think it's, it kind of flows well into this. Um, a good point of question, or a question that I think is important is, to you, how important is a team, coach, teammates, you know, a, a program basically? Um, and what are your thoughts on that? Well, the higher you get in your, in your goal that you, or whatever goals you have, the higher you want to go, the more important it is to have a team. Um, I, you know, when, when people start working with me, then they think, so you're, you're, you're making sure that, I, my mindset, my mindset is correct, but I'm, it's more than that. It's more, you know, every, every person that is behind the athlete is kind of a corner man. You know, I, I explain it as a corner man. When you, when you, when, when you want to get to the top, you have to, you have to rely on certain people that, that become your shield. You know, you're, you know, every professional sport is a very, very competitive environment, sometimes very hostile and sometimes a lot of drama and all those kind of things. So the, in your pursuit to achieve the highest possible goal, making, national, making a team, uh, going to international competitions, representing your country, all those kind of things, and I'm working with lots of those people. It is, it is absolutely a must to have a team, to have the best team behind you. Because uh, when, you're, when you're at the Olympics and you're running into a little, little issue, whatever that is, if you don't have resources that you can call upon, um, it's gonna, it, it has the potential to jeopardize your, your mission, absolutely. So a team behind you, that means, you know, your support, your, your coach, um, a, a mentor um, is, an, is an absolute must. If I, if I see people that have no coach but want to get to the top, that have absolutely no visible resources, um, that is a, that's a red flag for me. It doesn't mean they cannot make it, but I haven't seen a lot of athletes making it without anyone in their, Someone in their shadow, um, and, and relying only on them. You know, you're, you know, we were talking about sidetracking. There's so many, so many things right now where we get sidetracked. Are we, are we going to go, what are we going to do in this, in the, in the, um, in the winter time, are we going to Florida? Are we going to the West Coast? Uh, are we staying in Canada? Are we going to Europe? All those kind of things. You know, if you are on your own, you you have to make big decisions here that can impact uh, qualification. All those kind of things. You need people to discuss that with you. If you if you only if you're the the one man show, 
And you have to make big decisions here that have financial impact, can alter your career big time. You want to you have the best people to discuss it with. You, you want to you have the best people, the most reliable people that, that you trust, you want to discuss that with them. Because on the, on the battlefield, and that sounds a little bit harsh, and maybe some people would say, no, 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 Dirk, that's not the way it is. But I, I've seen it, and I, let me throw it out to you. When you're on the battlefield, in any kind of arena, any kind of a sports arena, nobody, nobody wants you to win. Nobody. So there's, there's that kind of scenario. Yeah, they may say, well, we want you to shine. We want you to win. Nobody wants. Nobody wants it. If there are three spots on an on a Olympic team, trust me, uh, number one, two, and three are not saying, okay, come on, number five. We want to have you, and I, I stay at home. Nobody will say that. Um, so to have a team behind you, they act in, in very different ways. Uh, situation. They are very important in very different situations. They can shield you. They, they are the ones that you want to discuss your, your challenges, your issues. And we're coming back to, you know, being the champion means, you know, champions have high, a high level of confidence. You know, that's, that's what champions are. You can see a champion from far away. The champions are coming into the arena, the champions warming up on the ice rink, NHL, whatever it is, the golfer. If you look at them, you would say, are they, are they here to shine? Are they here to, to play? I'm saying, you know, they play the room. They come in, they are on a mission. Are they here? to show us what they can, or are they here to hide? You can see that the body language is not gonna lie to you. You can see that. Are they here to perform and show their best, or are they here to survive? Yeah, but I so, think having that team, sorry to interrupt you, I think that the, the, the team that you have behind you allows you to have that confidence going into the, into the ring. If you're going into any environment and you feel alone almost, uh, I mean, at the end of the day, you are somewhat alone in the ring and it's on you. But if you feel like you put your best foot forward and have that support and, and uh, guidance there with you, it makes you more confident and I think uh, better prepared. You know, um, what are the things that you see that hinder people the most when they're coming up with their, their goals or their plan? Or what struggles do you see um, that? Yeah. Well, let me let, let me talk about the team one more time here. And don't be fooled to say to think, oh, a team is always applauding me. A team is always there to say how good I am. A team is always there to give me high five. No, a team is there to be your external validation of your performance. A team, you know, you you as an athlete and the team behind you is not there just to always say how great you are. That's not what a team is for. A team is there to give you an honest feedback because when you get to the top, the things that you learn, you have to learn to still improve are so millimeters. They're, they're almost invisible. So the things, and, and that's what you have to focus on. And a lot of people really, <laughs> have some problems with that, with this kind of idea. But, you know, people that want to get to the top have to focus not on the things that they can do. They have to focus on the things that they are not good at. Because, you know, for example, a rider, you cannot delegate any kind of movement patterns and dressage. You cannot delegate uh, the PF to your coach and say, jump on the horse, you do the PF, and then I come back and do the rest. You can't do that. So if, if one, one aspect in your, in your routines needs improvement, and that's where you lose the score, then that's what you have to focus on. That's where your coach comes in and has to help you. So it, it, don't be fooled and to think, oh, yeah, the people in my back are always applauding me. No, they're telling you where you 
have to improve, where you have to find ways to get better. But this is an honest feedback. It's the best feedback you will ever, ever get. It's, it's you know, there's empathy. It's not, there's not drama, there's empathy. When, when you have those people in your corner and say, you know, that was, that was good, Susie, but we got, we, we got to solve this problem here, this or this challenge. We have to make this better. And that's what we have to focus on. So don't be fooled and look for people that are always applauding you. Exactly. That should be a red flag for you. You don't need people to tell you all the time how good you are. Uh-uh, please not. But constructive criticism and, yeah. and like you said, kind of calling, not calling people out, but noticing the finer details that will make something good, great, is what's well, you have to, you, you, you have to trust in whatever comes from outside. And you have to be able to listen to that mm -hmm. and not feeling, oh, they don't believe in me. Of course they do. Well, you figure that out. Do they believe in you? Yes or no. Do they, do, are we sharing the goals? Yes or no. And that's why you have mentors that have a broad overview of what's needed in order to get to the top. They're going to tell you honestly what is needed. You know, there's no reason to tell an, an athlete uh, <laughs> on, a, on a, let's say, national or, or below national level how good they are. And then three years into that competing on that below national level, they're saying, well, coach, you're always telling me how good I am, but I've, I've never qualified for national. So uh, don't be fooled. You, you know, you want to hear, you want to hear the criticism in, 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 a, in a way that it's honest yeah. and empathetic and goal oriented. You know, if your goals are, if you come in and say, you know, I want to go, I, I want to go, I want to make the team, whatever team it is, then that there's some repercussions to it. There, okay, if you want to do this, then, then maybe we can, we can start talking about that, uh, making a plan. So, you know, my roots are from Germany and Germans, they always make plans as I, I, as I can admit, you know, they, they set goals, they make plans. And the question is, you know, why, why, why are they maybe a little bit better organized, <laughs> maybe with less drama than other people? I'm not saying you, have, you like drama or you're not organized, but it's kind of, maybe that's our DNA. So let me share you uh, why this is important. And I yeah. want to give you, and, and I, I really want to give you a different perspective on that. Why, why should I have a plan? There's so much talk about plan. So let me first explain why, why a plan or goals are important. And then let me explain you how you can create the goals that are important for you. Is that good? Okay, so I'm always saying, you know, when somebody says, oh, Derek, yeah, you know, I've heard so much about goal creation and goal completion, all these kind of things. I, I think I, I, I don't need that. I, I just, I just do it. And I'm saying, okay, so you're, you're sitting in an airplane, you're flying to LA, you get out of the air, airport, you jump in an Uber. Juan, the Uber driver, turns around and says, Susie, uh, where are we going to go? And Susie says, I don't know. Let's see. <laughs> So that, what, what does that mean? You, you basically end up nowhere because Juan doesn't know where you want to go. So you don't have a goal. If you don't share your goal with Juan, you're going you, you're gonna to stay at the airport because, yeah, where are we going to go? So a goal, in my opinion, and this is, you know, everything that I'm going to tell you today is this is all based on real, real life experience. Yeah, maybe... I've read it in a book, but I can tell you, I've applied it or I've heard it from people, and not just people, very, very successful athletes that have, have applied it. And they said, you know, that worked and that didn't work. And 
you know, I'm, 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 I think I'm a really good listener. I write a lot when I have my coaching sessions and I write a lot when I'm listening to those people. And I can tell you if, you, if you have goals and if you have written goals, you are at least 50% ahead of your competitors, 50. And if you share the success and progress with your team written, you, you give a report every, every week. This sounds a little bit school, army kind of thing. It is not. If you, if you give your coach a written report of your success, of your progress every week or every month, let's call it every month, you increase the, 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 your ability to reach your goal significantly. We're talking over 50% than people that have no goals, no written goals, lofty goals. I have it all in my head. I hear this a lot. And I'm saying, you don't. We're, you worked with me to quiet your voice between your ears, and you create more noise by having all these kind of things in your head, and you want to rely and depend on that? How are you going to do that? Keep it, you know, we, <laughs> this, is, this is another, you know, we're jumping in a lot of different areas, but I hope this gives you an overview um, how things work. Keep, you, you can, high performance athletes are, should not do two or three things at the same time. They shouldn't. Multitasking for high performance is a killer. Yeah, but we, we're told that you know, it's all about that multitasking is good and we can do a lot of things and we can do very successful. Then I'm saying, okay, so <clears throat> you have 10 things that you want to manage. So you have 100% capability of dedicating your energy to 10 things. So you give 10% here, 10% here, 10% here. And you want to be good in all with 10% Show me that. If you, so multi, please, if you, if you take one thing from today here, then when you sit on a horse, when you train a horse, when you're a coach, when you are an athlete, when you are focusing on your business, whatever it is, and focus on one thing. So when you train someone, then focus on this person that you just, that you train, and do not check your whatever it is and do a quick post or whatever it is. Don't do that. If you want to be a great coach, you want to be a great athlete, do not multitask. It's going to kill you. It's going to hold you back. It's going to take more time. It's going to, you're creating, you're creating problems with this. Make it simple. Desig have a plan and say, okay, but Dirk, I have to, I run a business. I have to do my post. I have to do my social media activities. And I'm not saying don't do it, but do it in a different way and say, okay, what's the num what, what should have your number one priority? Oh, training. Okay, well, what's the best time to do that? Well, it's always in the morning. I have the most energy and blah, blah, blah. And it's cool. And okay, then you designate from eight, but I'm just saying from eight to 11, this is all about training, nothing else. Oh, and when should I uh, answer my, my emails? Well, you know, emails can really sidetrack you. Mm -hmm. You get an email from your lawyer, from the bank, uh, what the heck, from your ex, <laughs> it, can de it can derail you so quickly. I've seen it, you don't, okay, put it, uh, put, designate a slot, maybe one hour, maybe two hours, where you deal with business related administration, whatever it is. So organize it. It, it sounds, yeah, but there, there's so much in and out. No, you don't have to run around with this phone. You don't. When I have a, when I have a session, my phone is off. Is my phone off now? It is. So be 
don't think you can multitask and be the best in your field. It's not going to work. Every, every athlete that uh, I've met will tell you the more I've... I, okay, Tanya, I have to share this. And then you can ask. So whenever I had the privilege to work with very, very successful, amazing art, artists, athletes, business people, entrepreneurs of the year, blah, 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 all those kind of things, uh, politicians, uh, and so on. So I hope you're still there, haven't lost you, <laughs> as I said, politician. I always ask you, what is, the num what is the number one recipe that brought you to maybe 10 Olympic Games or three medals uh, at the Olympics or two Olympic championships or whatever it is? I hear one thing over and over and over again. I call it principle. This is a principle that, you know, you can, you can take it or you can leave it. But I'm, I'm saying take it grab it, steal from my experience that I had with all these great people. They always said, my ability to focus. And what does that mean? My ability to focus is not doing 10 things. No, do one thing at a time and then do the next thing after it. Yeah, I think that's the that's point we were going to say. Like, you know, people think, okay, then you say it, you have to be 100% in. And it's like, like you said, people have businesses, people have children, all these aspects. And I think it's also just, uh, like you said, being able to compartmentalize each thing and focusing your allotted time to each goal then, you know, not just thinking. I mean, for my experience, uh, going to major games, uh, there is the only way you can be very successful in major games or get to the major games is to be focused on the task you are chosen to go for. And you cannot, like I say, these email phones and so on, uh, is definitely very distracting when you know, you need to be able to keep your head very free of all other things than uh, what you're actually planning on doing. Your plan is going to high perform in that championship. So my focus is planned on that. I will not have major uh, conversations or uh, each person is different. Some people need to talk a lot. Some people don't need to talk a lot, right? So, but I mean, my focus is being directed onto that particular perfect ride. And that perfect, particular perfect ride is going to happen when I am focused on the task and not sidetracked with other things, like you say. And another very important tool in order to prepare for or help a champion to become a champion is a training camp. Uh, you know, there's a, whoever organizes the training camp, you know, has to have one objective, in my opinion, and that is the best possible preparation for my team or for one athlete, if it's a one athlete training camp. And then I'm saying, and I, you know, sometimes they ask, so, you, you really like training camp? And I, I, I can assure you, I've probably participated in almost 100 different training camps in my career, 100. So that's a lot, in my opinion. And I'm saying, you know, a training camp is, is basically the, the, the best time, the best time of the season. And then they're saying, why is that? Because, you know, you don't have to worry about anything. <laughs> you know, we're in a hotel. You get you. You don't have to make your room. You you get your you get your your meals three times, four times. You know, and we're talking professional teams here. You don't have to do anything. You just focus on what many things. No, just one thing. You you train, you eat, you sleep. You train, you eat, you sleep. That's it. Isn't isn't you know that in my opinion is the best preparation. But of course you know there's some federations they have maybe some other ideas and they they do a lot in those training camps and i'm saying no no just you know you, it's it's preparation for 
whatever comes. You know, you of course you create momentum, and there's a lot of there's a lot of one-on-one -on -one or maybe group um, discussions about the same topic. So, what is our objective? So you talk about this, and you 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 bond the team, and that and you know, and how what better environment can provide that than a training camp with the right people, of course, with the right people. So, and then federations say, wow, you know, we have to, you know, there's the media. Yeah, okay, give the media a slot, give the media a slot. And I know we're, this is not a, you know, I'm not unreasonable when I say this, but it, it, everything can be structured in a way that the mission is the number one, and you have to be very clear about that. And that's the first thing, you know, why are we here? That's, you know, that's another thing that I really want you to take that from, from me right now and say, when, whenever you get to the training grounds, whatever you do, and I don't know if they're all, uh, if, you're, if you're all horse people, equestrians or whatever, it, it really doesn't matter. It's applicable to all disciplines because I, I would say I've coached almost all Olympic disciplines in my career. Um, the first question before you even show up, when you sit in your car is, what is my objective today? What am I here for? What am I here for? Uh, well, we wanna, uh, we wanna improve this and that. Okay, good. It's better than I have no idea what we're gonna to do today here. No, what am what am I here for? It's number one. And when you when you you know that's your objective. And when when you see certain challenges with this, okay, which can happen because not everything is picture perfect, we know that. Then your job is to find the solution to the challenges. But if you never ask what am I here for, what is my objective? You never, you, you never gonna try and find a solution to that, never. <clears throat> so another thing with this is share that with your coach. I call it briefing and debriefing. Yeah. At the beginning of your session, oh man, you gotta love this because I, I will tell you after what it did for a person that have coached during the Rio Olympics. Before every session, talk to your coach and say, you do a briefing. What are we gonna focus on today? Why am I here for? What am I here for? What are we gonna focus today? And if, you, if, you're, if you're clear on your goals, on your objectives for this 45, 60 minute session that you have, I promise you, better results because you all of a sudden have focus on doing exactly that. And the coach has the same focus. So you're looking at the same stuff mm -hmm. and then you do your debriefing. How long is that gonna take? Less than one minute. Exactly. How long does the briefing take? Less than one minute. It's quick, but it's, it's vital. So you do your debriefing and say, so coach, mission accomplished. And other coach says, yeah, that was good. Or coach says, yeah, that was good. But that we need improvement. Yeah, you're right. It wasn't, I, I could feel it, it didn't sit well with me. And the coach will say, yeah, I could see that. Do you see what I'm saying right now? Do you hear exactly what I'm saying? I can feel that something was off. And the coach says, yeah, I could see there was something off. Yeah. So you, you as the athlete can only feel what's going on. You cannot see yourself right, right in that moment. Yeah, you can videotape all of that. Okay, that is after. But in that moment, you can only feel what's going on. If you, if you think you can do all, all, all this stuff on your own, no coach needed, whatever, the coach is there to give you the, the, the outside information of 
what you can feel what he was able to see because you don't have that you can only feel mm -hmm. if you if you don't have that you're giving away 50% that other people have because you need the external validation because internally you know how it's going to feel the coach doesn't feel what you feel but he can see what you can not see and you need that you need that in order to say yeah coach you you explained it well to me my balance was off or whatever let's say the balance was off and you can say yeah i could feel that i i could feel that my center of gravity was too far here or there yeah and then and then in your debrief take that please take that you can not leave the debrief with a big question mark no. Oh my God, how am I going to do that? The coach has you, coach and you has to come up with a plan how to tackle that next, yeah. next time, next day. Yeah. And then you can, you can think about this and you can say, you know, yeah, that is, of course I can, I can manipulate my, my, my balance a little bit. I can, I can readjust my sit, my seat or whatever it is, or in any sport. Okay, so let me summarize. Briefing, vital. Debriefing, vital. Takes two minutes. Uh, I would say if you would ask me how much, how much <laughs> will this improve your results, I would say significant, 60, maybe 70%. Really, really, try it. So I owe you this because I said, at the Rio Olympics, one of my athletes from the Olympic Village says, oh, my, my coach isn't here yet, and we have only three days to prepare. What should I do to get the most out of it? Yeah, you're right. Briefing, debriefing, that's it. And she said, she phoned me after, and she said, from the Olympic Village, I still remember that, she said, I had the most productive coaching I've ever had with my coach, and she was, was with her many, many years before so if you're looking for an improved situation training situation where you get the most out of it by communicating communicating not guessing assessing well then do it do a briefing do a debriefing and i promise you i promise you you will say that was the best thing we started now and then you can take it of course to a higher level no, no, what I wanted to say is that the importance of the coach is, like you say, we are just feeling and we can see ourselves only after the fact we can look at the video and then it's too, it's, be, it's past, okay? So then you see what you did wrong or what you could do better. But I think just that is basically you need that coach you can fully trust to when he is on the same page than you that he wants this or this person wants you to be there is I think one of the most important tool to for your success. And I think also it's important as a coach to also be able to talk with their student. It's very important that you have a very good conversation. And I think uh, Champions, like you say, to, to be a champion or get to be a champion, you need to be very critical on yourself for the smaller details. And the trainer has to be qualified enough for you to be getting up to this level where you want and to go. And consistency. And consistency. Yeah, very, very consistent. The consistency, I think, is the most important tool. Because I think you see, I mean, I, I, I think in anything, Sometimes people think, oh, we have to jump from one person, then the next person. Maybe this one can help me. Maybe that one can help me. Find someone I think you trust, someone that you're very open and that you verbalize your goals with those people. Because sometimes as a coach, I'm sure you get people in and their goals are maybe so unclear or um, maybe not as achievable in the time frame that they want. Um, and it's very hard to then build a program or, or, or make a plan for them because it's unclear what everybody wants, you know? So I think open dialogue, um, building a, a plan, staying consistent, and, uh, you know, just trusting that you can get there with the right program. 
you know. We do have some questions. Uh, do you mm. want to answer some questions? There was a uh, yes. Chris was asking, can you please give me an example of multitasking that we shouldn't be doing? Well, <clears throat> you you always you always want to look at the task at hand, the one task at hand, and. Uh, whatever that is in that moment, everything else, you know, okay, so um, you, you have your training session. You sit on the horse, you do, you do your movements, you, you, you do your warm up, you do your, your, your flatten, flattening work, whatever it is, and, and you know, you ask yourself, what am I focused on right now? Am I focused on flattening or am I focused on the kids at school? Are they sitting there now with mask around their mouth or are they, or you think about, oh my God, we have to, we have to talk to the mortgage broker because the mortgage comes up. You know, it's, it, these are those exactly. thoughts. These are just thoughts. It's, you know, that comes to your mind that are, that is, that are important, that are, you know, I'm not saying they're not important, they're absolutely important. They need your attention, of course. But how much can you help your kids when you sit on the, on the horse? How much can you help to find a solution on, on the mortgage or on the remortgage or whatever it is, or the repairs on your roof? When you sit on the horse, you, you really, you know, there's, there's no way you can solve that problem when you think about that. It's, it's just add, adds Warm up noise, <laughs> right? That's a good one, yeah. So can you give tips to keep the focus? Because I think uh, that's another thing, how to keep your focus. Because, I mean, that, I like what you say it is, is uh, it's very, you know, some people have a very hard time to sort out their thoughts before they go on the horses or go to to perform high perform uh, that you're not getting sidetracked which you say with your mortgage broker or the kids or whatever that you have this baggage off already yeah, or before you go on so how before. can you how can you focus how do you do this you know that is that is i would say that's really an art that we have to learn to master. This is not easy. I am you know, this is hard. Everything in high performance is hard work. You know, it's, you know, you, you you're not, you're not becoming a champion by accident, but let me a answer that Evie. I think it's very, very important. And there's a, there's a, I wrote about this uh, several times because I find it so important. It's called the Zyganic effect. And I, I, let me explain that to you. So there's a, uh, I think it happened in, somewhere in Russia a long, long time ago, and they performed a, a study and, and they, they were in a restaurant and they looked at the waitress and the waitress took the order and went to the, went to the kitchen and gave the order to the kitchen and the kitchen could prepare everything. And sometimes when I was busy at the kitchen, she couldn't give it to the kitchen. She had to keep it in her mind that there were three steaks, three beer, and a, and a Caesar salad on, I just made that up, on, on table number seven. So, so here's the thing, you know, what, what, what does that tell us? And we all, me include, I sometimes wake up at 3.30 at night and wake up with a thought, with an unsolved thought mm -hmm. that I have to deal with and I haven't yet. So the thing is, give everything to the kitchen as early as possible. The moment, the moment you, hopefully, either you have to deal with it on your own, mostly, or you can delegate it to somebody else and check in if they did. But deal with it immediately. The problem, most problems are not going to solve if you wait that somebody else is going to deal with this. It's, it's not going to happen. Sorry. 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 And I want you to sleep well, but if you wake up at 3.30 or 3.35, and I wrote about this a long time ago, it is, it is absolutely avoidable, but 
you 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 don't be fooled and say, oh, you know, I I solve it, but not now. If it's big, then it wakes you up. Is it if it's small, then then it's not important. So that's okay. You know, the small stuff, it's don't sweat about the small stuff. Don't sweat about that. But the big stuff, the the the, the roofing repair, the mortgage, the kids, uh, your health, your finance, your, uh, I have to make a decision uh, who's going to be my next coach or whatever it is, or should I buy this horse? Yes or no? You got to deal with this immediately. It's, it wakes you up, unfortunately. Deal with, give it to the kitchen. Give it to the kitchen. <laughs> Means deal with it right away. I okay. think an important thing I was also thinking is, you know, I, and I'm the same also with, you know, when you're making decisions to also stick with them, because, you know, I see sometimes the struggle also, people have very good goals, everything's laid out very well, but if they're so left and right or uncertain, uh, like you said, you're kind of just running in circle and, and nothing's really, really happening because you're not really committed to one thing or another. So I think that's just something that I, I think having worked with you and, and something we've discussed to really make a goal and um, try to I, stick with the plan. <laughs> Tanya, I, I will I, give me five minutes and then we talk exactly about that. So okay. we're, coming, we're coming now into something very, very important. I want to I wanna teach you, please, Accept me as your coach today. I want to teach you how, how to make the right goals. The right goals. Are, we, are you okay with it? You, Absolutely. Right? I cannot tell you this is, this is what you have to do. But I can tell you a way now. This is a five-step way. How you can identify, is this the goal, the right one for me? Yes or no? Okay. So whenever you... Think about your next achievement. Whenever you think about this is in me, this, this is what I want, this is, this is what I want to create for myself, for my family, for my business, for my operation, uh, for the people, for my employees, whatever it is. The first question you want to ask yourself is this is the right goal and right, I want to say R-I-G-H-T, right, R-I-G-H-T. Okay, the first letter is R. The question is, is this relevant? R stands for relevant. Ask yourself, oh, I want to do this and that. Ask yourself, is this relevant for me, for my, for my family, for whatever? First question, to identify if this goal is really a goal that you should pursue. Is it relevant? I stands for indicator. So when, whenever, let's say you, uh, let's say you want to make the Olympic team for now. So we haven't talked about Olympics, but now let's talk about Olympics. You want to say, okay, this is my goal. How do I get there? Can I create indicators of progress? So what do I mean with this? Uh, an indicator of progress is, for example, I can compete locally. That's the lowest level. That's the startup. And then I can, I can compete um, on a regional level, on a state or provincial level, on a national level, on an international level. So these are indicators that I, I, can, I, I can see progress in the way to achieve my goal. Another indicator is, oh, my business in the first year, it's making 100,000. The second year, it's making 200,000, making 300,000, blah, blah, blah. Or um, my goal is to increase the, the number of students in my, in my barn. Okay, you say, okay, I'm going to, this is my goal. Uh, first year, five students. Second year, seven students. Third year, 10 students and so on. So indicators of progress, okay? It's measurable indicators. Third, uh, G stands for gravity. Does my goal have so much force 
that it can drive me strongly towards that? Is it, does it have, does it have grit for me? Do I really want this? And uh, for, <laughs> I'm using, I'm using a real life example, as I said before. So I have, I have uh, <laughs> worked with, uh, people in your industry, in the equestrian industry, and we have a we have a location in in uh, in Ontario. It's called Palgrave, and then we have a location uh, in France. It's called Paris. And I'm always using. You want to go to Palgrave, or you want to go to Paris? And uh, don't get me wrong here. Don't bombard me with oh you don't like. I I've been in Palgrave. I like it there. Absolutely. This is nothing about Palgrave. And this is nothing about Paris, but if you yeah. want to go to the Olympics, then you cannot spend too much time at Palgrave. Okay, you have to expose yourself to, you know, to the re to the best in the world, and that might not be in Palgrave. You can use any kind of any kind of location, so it's not it's not Palgrave. So Palgrave. Uh, example. <laughs> I, I'm nice to you, and please be nice to me. So. But you have to understand, and Paris definitely will, for that person who wants to make the Olympic team, definitely has a different force to, to go there than doing a regional kind of competition. You, you, I, I hope you understand. So this is nothing against the locations here. And you could H, well, we're not done yet. Okay. H means high value. Does it have high value? Is it important? Is it important for me to compete in Paris? Yeah, you know, people, yeah, of course. Well, then the people, the nomination committee or whoever uh, is gonna judge over you or judges, oh, oh, she competed in Paris and she had a, she had a pretty good show or uh, they, my, I work with a lot of track and field athletes. Oh yeah, they, com they competed at the, the, the Diamond League uh, um, or PGA or wherever it is, you know, on the highest level or NHL, I work with NHL uh, hockey players, you know, if you, high level, yeah. So if that's your goal, you have to focus on that. Last but not least, very important, the T stands for time. Is the time right to start my goal and execute my goal and to complete my goal? Because at the very beginning I said, everybody can start something. Everybody can open a coffee shop next week, easy. But can you make it successful? Can you complete it? Can you bring it to the finish line? That is the question. So whatever goal you think about, is this the right time to do it? It's the last point. Is this the right time to do it? Can I start it now? And can I complete it? Because that's what you want. Completion, goal completion. That's what you want. You want. Everybody can start something. Every, everybody. Every, you can start, you can be in business tomorrow uh, with a click funnel thing, marketing, whatever. But can you be successful? Can you complete this successfully? That, I would say, per my definition, if I can even say that, um, that makes a champion or that, that separates a champion from a not champion. So, right I want who wants to have some question to all of this because there is, uh, I'm sure, some questions out there. Why, uh, you know, the goal setting and everything and the trainers and then all the things you said just in the end, uh, that it is so important to stay focused on the directions you want to take and also realizing is that really the right thing? You know, and uh, yeah, we'd like to just yeah invite it um, invite the audience, I guess, uh, yeah. to see if they have any more questions that they'd like. To, uh, Do you want to type it into the side here? Then we can ask that, or did we answer all your questions? <laughs> I, I I want to share something with you. I you know I I take part in in lots of those kind of uh, 
situations here. Well, not lots, but you know, once a month, maybe, maybe twice a month. And I, I was at a, you know, I had this wow VIP person, you know, guru kind of thing. And I thought, oh, should I really punch in a, a question for me? Oh my God, it looks stupid. And and I was, come on, you know, Dirk, I'm 58. <laughs> How stupid can you look like? And and I thought, oh, should I? And I was really battling myself. And I thought, okay, let, let's do it. Is that my name with it? Ah, oh, yeah. And it was. And I thought, okay, I, it doesn't matter. So I punched in my question. And oh, he took my question. <laughs> he didn't mention my name. He said, and here's a question from Canada. <laughs> and I thought, oh, first time. So it's not painful. I'm not looking at your name. It doesn't really matter. Ask, ask, ask whatever it is. If it, you know, that's okay. really, you know, and everybody says there's no stupid question, and there is no stupid question. And well, there and, we have a couple of questions. So okay, have, bring it on. We have one for people who had a goal of Tokyo. How do they alter the goals to Paris or Tokyo later? Well, Tokyo would have been over by now, by last weekend. Uh, Paris is in four years and, and LA is in eight years. So I, we have no idea what's going on, what, what's going on next year. So my, and you know, a lot of things, especially in your industry or in the horse industry, a lot of things have to do with time, right? And you know, you, you get older, but you can still yeah. ride a horse when you're 70, but your horse might not be able to want to ride at the Olympics when the horse is whatever, let's say 20. And, and I'm not saying 20 year old horses cannot make it, but you know, there's a certain shelf life on it. Or gymnasts, for example, I work with lots of gymnasts. Well, a, a shelf life of a gymnast is, they start very young, they retire very young. This could, yeah. this could be, this where we are right now, this could be the end of their their yeah. career. Absolutely. They might be 20, 22 ish or whatever uh, in four years. And then it's too late. Their, their, you know, body composure, all these kind of things change hormones and you know, all this kind of, you know, different sport, uh, different regulations, different, uh, different challenges. Uh, Basically, altering is quite difficult. It depends on uh, what, what uh, first of all, like either you have the horse or you, you're a young yeah. enough to do it. So it's basically individually altered to it, probably. Or but else. let me, yeah, but let me share a quote with you here. And, and maybe you can take, and, and this is pertaining you, the, the athlete. If you work with horses, if you don't work with horses, then it's per really pertaining you. And the quote is from, from uh, uh, Vladimir Horowitz. And Horowitz was one of the uh, most well-known composers and pianists. He was Russian-American. Uh, and he said this here. And, and I yeah, I want you to think about this. He, he said, when I, when I do not practice one day, I can, f I can hear it. That's what he said. If I don't practice two days, my wife can hear it. If I don't practice three days, the whole world can hear it. So if you ask me what, and you know, the, my little scribble here for you, it's, it's just staying with it um, and, and, not, and not crawl under the rock and wait until it's over. Until it, when it's over, you don't, because we don't know when it's over and it can be too late. So I, I would say, keep, keep practicing, keep your momentum, set goals, small goals, because yeah. whenever we achieve a goal, what happens when we achieve a goal? So I'll give you an example. I want to write a book. Okay, Dirk wants to write a book. And eight months later, Dirk wrote a book and published the book. How does it feel? It felt good. I felt confident after this. You know, I completed the task. I brought it to the finish line. It had some, some bumps. <laughs> uh, I brought it to the finish line. But at the end, if you have a big goal, 
make it small goals. If the big goal is I want to go to the Olympics and I don't know when the next Olympics is going to be, well, then break it down and say, okay, I want to stay fit. I want to keep my horse moving. I want to work on technical details. I want to, I want to, whatever. I want to improve uh, the situation with my coach. I want to create a better infrastructure. I want to improve my resources. I want to, you know, all those little things. So break it down kind of, you know, you would never eat an elephant with one bite. So you break it down into chunks. You chunk, you, there's a, there's this chunk, this chunk, this chunk. And all of a sudden you're the big kind of unknown. Will I ever be able to go to the Olympics? Becomes, okay, I broke it down in a lot of different things here. And I'm tackling all of those step by steps by steps. And they are manageable. Exactly. Manageable. And whenever I achieve that little piece here, yay, you can say, yay, awesome. Um, mission accomplished, small mission accomplished, but it's, it's important for the big, for the, for the, you know, this is micro thinking, micro, and the big one is macro. The big one macro is Paris, macro. There are maybe a hundred different micros on your way that you have to tackle that, that that's the the daily grind that nobody can take that away and that the the better you are in managing the micro the easier it is to achieve the macro i say that again because this is really important the macro is the overarching goal and there are hundreds of little micros every day there's a some sort of a micro and the better you become managing those, the daily grind, the, the what's the other word, uh, in the trenches, you know, being in the trenches and working your uh, off and, <laughs> and get your hands dirty and all these kind of things. The better you get with this, the easier it is yeah. to, make, to make the macro your reality. You can quote me on that. Yeah, no, that is totally, uh, it's much easier when you don't, don't aim for that one gigantic elephant, like you say, that you see, say to yourself, it's little steps up and then it's achieve like building the, a house. <laughs> yeah, it's like building, the, building a house from the, the base, basement up. So there's another question mm -hmm. here, and it says, um, what are some good resources to set goals? What are some good resources to set goals? Goals. Well, resources could be, you know, people, people in your industry. I'll, I have a funny photo here for you. I'm going to show you that. <laughs> uh, oh, is that gone? No. Sorry. Sorry. Wait, 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 wait. Where is that? That is uh, Horowitz. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, I mixed it up here. Screen sharing, okay. Uh, okay, let, uh, let's not do this. <laughs> here, here's my answer. You are allowed to steal from everybody who is better than you. Steal means not taking it away physically, but steal with your eyes. And I'm always, I'm also saying, and some people say, ah, oh, you can't say that. And I'm saying, I'm 58. I can say whatever I want. Uh, no, just kidding. Uh, I'm saying, um, learn from others. Learn, yeah, learn only from those that are better than you. Exactly. Do not, do not look. I don't want to say losers, but always, always look at the people that are better than you because it's, you know, we have a brain and we also call it the monkey brain. And whatever you see, you start basically embracing all of that in what you want to embrace is what you want to become and not what you want to avoid. And I, I assume if you're on this call, you don't want to be average. You don't want to be mediocre. So, don't look at it. Don't look at it. Don't look at it. Look the best in the world. 
how they want, you know, for me, the best time is, is not necessarily to, sh to see them in the ring or, or in the arena or whatever. I look, I, I love when they do interviews. I love when, when, they, uh, when they do their warm up. I love those kind of things. I, you know, that's where the magic happens, in my opinion. The rest is just, you know, it's a logical consequence. But that's what I want to see. So look only to the best. I agree, totally agree. That uh, was a guideline since I uh, mean I did many different sports, uh, and that was a guideline basically uh, all the way in all the sports I did uh, how to achieve it. And uh, I think just looking at the best and and try to be getting as good as them. What a better. Absolutely. There is another question and says, how do you decide if a goal is relevant? Well, you know, it, is it relevant for you? Is it is it is it important for you? Does it have does it have major impact on you, on your life, on your lifestyle, on and not just you, but also you know if you have um, if you have staff, does it does it will that have a massive impact on my staff as well? It you know on my on my family or my kids on on everything you know that that for me is relevant if it's writing the you know i in fact i can share one one thing with you you know you, you're not getting rich by writing a book uh but does it does it was it relevant for me uh, absolutely well, why because there was is it gonna gonna impact my family no it's not gonna impact my family my kids no no it's not but uh but it had a, it had a, you know, it was significant for me to share it with the world, and and one way to do it is writing, um, writing a book. And I'm I'm co right now I'm coaching a, 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 a person that was very very low, an addict. Um, he's in he's in rehab right now, and I sent him the book, and I said, you know, one way to share your story is to write a book. And he had an amazing, he, it's, a, it's an amazing story. It's a sad story, but it's also a very positive story. And one way to do it is to share it with the world so that other you know, kids can learn from it. And he's a, he's a good speaker. So I said, you're, you're a really good speaker. You're very empathetic about what you're doing. And one way to do it is write a book. Is it, is it gonna be relevant for him? Probably yes. I would say there is another question. Thank you for answering that. I think that was a very good way of explaining it. What is relevant for me is maybe not relevant for somebody else. And the goal no. to find the relevant is each individual needs to evaluate, uh, see the evaluation for yourself. But I mean, I think it's very important to have goals which are achievable. And then there is another question, which is really nice. It says, why do you think a lot of writing coaches don't use goal setting? Why? Well, I can tell you why. why. I don't know. I don't know if you want to hear it because yeah, it's it. I don't know if you want to hear it, but it's, it's, you know, you, you <laughs> I think it's so important to have goal setting. Goal setting. I'm, I'm, you measure you measure your success, and if you don't have goals, you cannot measure. You say you, well, and if it's you know, and and again and again, I want to be very clear. I'm. It's not that I'm. I would ever draw somebody to the Olympics. That that is babysitting for me. But if somebody has a goal and says, I want to go, I'm here, and I want to go here, can you help me? That's different. So if you work with a, with an, with a coach, and dear coaches, please forgive me, you, you have to coach, you have to learn to create measurable results. If you shy away from it, then you're not a good coach. Sorry. If you shy away from creating measurable goals, there are two. They, they, there are two people that are important for that. It's it's the coach and the student. You know, if this if the student says, "I want to go to the Olympics, but I want to have only one session per week with you," that is that doesn't fly. So it's for both. You want to, you want to create measurable results. 
find the right coach for that. If the coach says, nah, you know, don't put me on the spot here, then I'm saying, why not? Because in the Olympic final, I will be on the spot and I, I have to be prepared for that. And if the whole kind of uh, atmosphere or environment is not, if we cannot create that kind of environment, then it's probably not the right fit. Yeah. Awesome question. Wow. That was a good question, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh -huh, uh -huh. I like that. It's, um, it's uh, you know, uh, for, I, th I think it's very difficult to, what means goal setting. Goal setting can be also only, you know, I want to just cater today. Okay. That is a and, goal setting. Okay. And I want to, I want to share that with you. And, you know, I'm, I, I'm working more with the, the, the athletes and with the coaches. I also work with some coaches, but it, it's probably 10 to one. So I had, a, I had a chat two weeks ago and I said, okay, so have you, to the athlete, have you chair, shared your goals with your coach? And she said, no, oh, it's COVID and you know, we're just keeping it. Yeah, yeah, I said, okay, good. But at some point, COVID is gone and whatever, and then there's something else, and, and there's still the goal, right? You still have that goal. And she said, absolutely, I have that goal. Well, then I said, you know, you, you got to share your goal with your core team. Yeah. Because if your core team doesn't know, if your core team doesn't know what, how ambitious you are, what your goals are, how can your core team help you to achieve that? So, yeah, so she talked to her coach about that. And I must say the coach was super, super happy. And I can ensure you every coach is super, super happy if, when the athlete comes and says, this is what I want. This is how I think I can get there. And I want to get there with you. Every coach will, will love that because coaches don't want to be babysitters. Coaches are, per definition, comes from the old English coach. It's a vehicle, brings you from A to B. That's what the coach is. It brings you from where you are to where you want to be. And if you don't share <laughs> where your destination, your, your final destination is, then how can a coach bring you there? I don't know. Yeah, no. Share, no. share it, absolutely. And it, yeah, sharing. No, I mean, I think uh, that was super questions we got here. And I think you gave us a, a big overview what champions do and, and how to get there and what goal setting is and so on and so on. I think it, it's a broad view we got right now. For sure, you can go more and more detailed to everything in the end. But uh, in that one, we already an hour and a half in the session now that we uh, could go on and on and on because it's super interesting. And then it's, uh, like I say, in our mind, uh, how to direct our body and our goals uh, and how to achieve it, not easy. But I think learning focusing is one thing which is already um, very important and it takes time to learn that what is focus like you said it's very difficult but for me I think uh, you need to learn how to focus on one thing at a time like you say okay? and I think uh, just adding to that whether you're a coach trainer whatever you want to call it I mean uh, I, I see for us the way we look at it also and I think you'll agree with this is you know, when we work with the horses, more specifically, this is a bit more specific to people riding and stuff, that you try to come on with a clear plan, that we, you know, like, that we have open dialogue throughout the lesson. And, um, you know, I sometimes see that missing sometimes for other people. And I think for me as a, as a student, mostly, <laughs> um, it has made a huge impact in the way I can improve because I always feel like there's an open dialogue. So I think just having a plan going on um, and being very open to what your goals are make a huge difference. So, yeah. 
And I mean, what we can do also for everybody here, if there's more questions after the fact you have, you can always send it uh, to us and we give it on to Dirk and Dirk can connect with you and answer questions. Um, and if you're interested in his book, his book is called How to Make Life Work and Build a Legacy. Um, and I think you can buy that almost anywhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. So can I say something to this here? Uh, because I, I thought, okay, uh, if, if, you, if you want this book, 188 pages, absolutely awesomeness, of course. Uh, you can, uh, I can ship it to you for $20. Um, if, you, if you want to use that email address, uh, you can e-transfer $20 or you can send me your text on this phone number. I'll put it in an nice envelope i'll send it to you <laughs> it's twenty dollars yeah, okay. and uh, no we really appreciate you come on the call here and get us an input what is champions doing and how to get there and how you know what it takes and what you know it's not just champion the champion can be in all different levels okay but how to get somewhere and i wanted to make sure that you know, uh, people have an idea or they can see what it takes to get there. And also you can set little goals and achieve a big thing and do it step by step and get up to the top wherever you want to be. Or get and back on track. Or, or get back on track at the moment where we are. <laughs> it's a bit more back on track. Like we do right now this... Uh, a test writing clinics because um, I said I, we, we can't just sit here and wait till this is over. Let's do some test writing clinics for all the writers and hope that they can get some achievement because they couldn't achieve anything yet uh, because there's no shows. But anyway, so basically, <laughs> I think we we're screen are, sharing. Hold on a second. Yeah, there's a lot of screen sharing. But well, Carol, uh, I think I can see your screen. <laughs> It's not my screen. Oh, I've done that now. But. Anyways, it doesn't matter. <laughs> but any case, uh, if there's more questions you have, we can give them on to Dirk. And also, um, I really appreciate you guys were on it. And thank you, thank you, everybody, for the interest. I have closing words. I have closing words. Can I? One minute. Okay, closing words. Go ahead. <laughs> closing words. I want to leave you with this here. When you... When you look at what is, and when you talk what is, you get more what is, okay? So if you want to change something, you have to change the way you talk about it and think about it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And during these times, I throw this to you, be an antidepressant to all, be uplifting, exactly. be supportive, be happy and help people. Be there and listen. Be there and just listen. And when they ask you, then talk to them. You're not alone, and we have to let those people know that they are not alone. And you and everybody else is entitled to ask for help. Yes. Believe in your gifts, in your talent, in your ambitions, in your goals, and everything. And it doesn't matter what other people think of you. It really doesn't. So keep that in mind. There's, there's help. Trust your talents or, or believe in your talents, in your goals. And don't worry what other people talk about you. Their problems might be so much bigger than yours. So don't worry about them. And I can assure you, uh, you live a much happier life and be an antidepressant for yourself, for your family, for your friends, for the people you hang around with. And thank you, Tanya. And thank you, um, Evie. And thank everybody on the call here for participating. Um, I enjoyed it. I, them a little bit. Yes. I hope you too. Bye-bye. Thank, thank you. you. We thank really you. appreciate it. Thank you, everybody. And it was so great having you all. And uh, we hope that uh, we bring out some other, you know, charts. But I mean, Dirk, I'm pretty sure you need to come back because there will be a lot more questions which you need to answer. 
and maybe we can learn more how to get our goals and get up to the champions where we want to be and uh, how to overcome the time we live right now. We are already on it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you all. And I appreciate you guys came all in. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Good night.